Hi, my name is Ava. I am an entrepreneur and a business student. In this video, I aim to unpack a complicated business research paper and present it in a quick video with an easy to understand and sometimes profitable message to fellow students and entrepreneurs. Let's dive into this wonderful study by Dr. Hui Fang, Neil Morgan, and Lopo Rego. Lopo, Lopo Rego is the handsome gentleman on the bottom left. You can find links to their bios down below in the comment section. I encourage you to click through and peruse through their recently published work in the field of marketing. What's the point of this research paper? Well, Dr. Fang and her team had some burning questions. They wanted to know, has there really been a decrease in marketing power over recent years? And does an increase in marketing power result in an increase in company performance, revenue, shareholder return? And then they wanted to know what are some of the long term and short term effects of empowering your marketing department. This is important and who cares? Well, to date, at the time of publishing this, there was no empirical study with a clear understanding of the relationships between marketing power and profitability. Existing studies were based on small samples. Here, Dr. Fang and her team take a sample of 612 companies spanning more than three decades. That's pretty comprehensive. Marketing managers, entrepreneurs, and investors can make better decisions when it comes to divvying up limited dollar resources between the departments, such as R&D, HR, and of course, marketing. Now, let's go over the variables. On the left, you have the marketing department power, and then that feeds into your firm level marketing capabilities, and that means building MBAs. What are MBAs? MBAs stand for market-based assets, and these are things such as brand equity and customer relationships. That would be your mediator, and then that flows into your firm performance, and firm performance would be profitability, stock price, things like that. The idea here is very, very interesting, actually. So the concept that I'm going to give you an example from work is that if you have a strong marketing department and they have interfunctional coordination with, like, say, tech support, they might band together and go to management and say, hey, we need $50,000 to develop a series of videos because we want to better train our customers. And marketing department might tell you that they need it because it helps them sell more equipment. Uh, if you didn't have a powerful marketing department, they wouldn't be coordinating with tech support, or maybe they wouldn't get the money that they need to develop the video series. But if you have a strong marketing department, they can go ahead and get funded for that project. And that project is going to give you a return in the long run. That's sort of how I interpret this. So the independent variable would be the marketing department power, and then your moderator would be the firm level marketing capability to build videos, content, um, brand recognition, customer loyalty, and in, in return over time, that would uh, improve your firm performance. So this is a secondary based data research design. It means that it involves using already existing data. These are some of the sources that they use in the report. They have the short term profitability or the ROA, and that's calculated with accounting data from ExecuComp. They uh, calculate the longer term future shareholder value or the TSR. And to do that, they take stock prices from the Center for Research and Security Prices. For marketing capabilities, remember those MBAs, market-based assets, they take data from the trademark uh, office, the US Patent and Trademark Office. And then they also calculate ratios from the SGNA in the publicly available financial reports. And to calculate the power of the marketing ex executives, they go and they do a count and they go back to all the companies and they look at the publicly available information of the formal titles for each executive and how many of them are actually in marketing versus not marketing. And then they also look at their salaries and other forms of compensation. Now, with any research, you want to do some spot checks along the way, uh, otherwise known as face validity assessments. And here's a couple that the researchers do in this paper. To, with, while they're researching marketing department power, they're, of course, they're coming up with their calculations and, you know, 99 means very powerful and one means less powerful. But how do they know that they're on the right track? 
Well, to confirm that they're on the right track, they sent a questionnaire to 175 top managers regarding their perceived power. Results came back, and of course, they showed that the numbers that they were estimating were valid. The other validity assessment that they did is to determine if their score for building market-based assets was correct. So they compared it to a couple lists like best global brands and best Salesforce. So best global brands might label Apple as a very powerful marketing department and Walmart as having a weaker marketing department. And they compared that list to their building market-based assets report, and they found that they were in alignment. So in an effort to truly understand this report, I had to look up more than 20 mathematical and statistical terms, and these are 13 of them. But the one that you really want to get to is this one. It's called Generalized Method of Moments. GMM, and that's the method that was used in this report. And it uses the assumptions about specific moments about the random variables instead of assumptions about the entire data set. Here they use a two year lag on the GMM method. Here is a screenshot of a small section of the report. And in here, we're only gonna go over the significant coefficients. I've highlighted them in yellow. As you can see, there is a significant correlation between marketing department power and firm performance firm capabilities. Marketing department power is positively associated with the firm's short-term future profitability and their long-term future shareholder value. In this chart, they illustrate that there has been an increase in marketing power between 1993 and 2008. So to recap the findings, we show that the marketing department power is positively related to the firm level ability to build long run market based assets and to leverage these MBAs in the short run to deliver cash flows. Uh, it's also positively related to short term firm performance and to long term firm performance as well. This is especially interesting because back to my example about the marketing department teaming up with tech support to develop a series of videos, that's something that it may seem like a big investment up front, but the rev return on that investment continues to trickle in long after the initial investment has been made. Salespeople could be using those videos to sell more equipment, you know, eight years down the road. Here's my interpretation of what is important from this study. It's important to empower your marketing department and it's important to encourage cross department collaboration. Like my example earlier about tech support and the marketing department uh, creating content. It's also important that your marketing department work with the sales department to see how they can leverage social media and other, you know, assets. And uh, it's important that marketing uh, bridge the gap between tech and R&D by going and finding out what the competitors are selling, what customers are asking for, and then um, ad giving advice on what new products to develop. I've included this slide because I'm recapping the conclusions again as part of the assignment. So who benefits from this research paper? Uh, everybody benefits from this research paper. If you ask me, stockholders benefit, um, investors such as VCs and angel investors, M&A analysts, CEOs, small business owners, marketing department heads can take this paper and run with it, go to their CEO and request a bigger marketing budget or a little more power. Uh, companies that offer uh, marketing as a service could benefit from this because they could take this to their customers and say, hey, th this is why you need to invest in marketing. And also accountants when they're developing budgets. Uh, maybe they could be a little more generous uh, the next go around when they're divvying up the money. Here comes the critique part. This is the part I don't like to do, but it is an assignment. So here we go. I feel that the researcher included too many mathematical adjustments that to clearly understand the math in this report. Uh, adjustments such as Windsoring and then proof checks such as the Wald test. I had to go back and look up 20 uh, terms just to get through it. And then I think that when there's an abundance of such adjustments to the data, it can make the study lose some credibility. 
because they really massage the data in this report. I'll tell you that. And then um, I think that they should have included an example calculation from one of the sample companies to illustrate the flow of the power uh, of the marketing department to the MBA products and then to the profit and loss and then to the stock price with like real numbers, like hard numbers. I think that would have made it a little easier to understand. And we've come to the end of the video. This is what I call the gold nugget moment or my takeaway. And that's that the short term return may not always be great when you're investing in the marketing department or empowering your marketing department. Uh, but the long term financial benefits are going to continue to trickle in as proven by the stockholder returns. Please note that these are my opinions only and these interpretations may not echo the intention or the sentiment of the authors.